Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about the endosymbiotic theory. This theory is the explanation for how scientists think the eukaryotic cells first arose. It also describes how scientists think that eukaryotic cells acquired two organelles, specifically mitochondria and chloroplasts. So first, let's go through the steps. It starts with an early ancestral cell that has developed a rudimentary endoplasmic reticulum and a rudimentary nuclear envelope by enfoldings of the plasma membrane. So here that membrane system is shown in blue and the DNA is shown in orange. Then one of these early cells engulfed an aerobic bacterium. Aerobic simply means that it's capable of carrying out aerobic respiration which involves using oxygen to make ATP, which is the major energy currency of the cell. If you're interested in learning more about aerobic respiration, please see my video on that topic. So here we have this early cell that engulfs this aerobic bacterium. It most likely does so through some kind of phagocytosis event. Phagocytosis is a type of endocytosis, which is how cells will bring in objects from the external environment. I also have a video on endocytosis, phagocytosis, and pinocytosis, so take a look at that if you're interested in that subject. Now, after this aerobic bacterium was engulfed, many, many generations went by, and over time, this bacterium, its descendants, lost the ability to live independently, and they became full internal symbionts of the larger host cell. This led to the organelle that we know of as a mitochondrion. So after this had happened, and again, remember that there are many, many generations, perhaps even millions of years, that, that go by as the mitochondria are developing from this aerobic bacteria lineage. Then one of these cells engulfs another bacteria cell, this one a photosynthetic cyanobacterium. And over many, many generations again, this leads to the organelle that we know of as the chloroplast. So we see here that there were two endosymbiotic events. The first one where the aerobic bacterium was engulfed, leading to the mitochondrion, and the second one where the cyanobacterium was engulfed, leading to the chloroplast. So the fact that there were two endosymbiotic events, one following the other, means that this entire thing is known as a serial endosymbiosis. Now you might ask, how do scientists know the order that this happened in? How do we know that the aerobic bacterium leading to the mitochondrion was engulfed first and that it was only much later that the cyanobacterium leading to the chloroplast was engulfed? Well, scientists know this from something called phylogeny. That is the evolutionary history. Here we have a simplified phylogenetic tree that shows all of life. We have the three domains, bacteria, archaea, and then eukarya, which I've shown in some more detail over here. Both the aerobic bacterium and the cyanobacterium came from somewhere along this bacteria lineage, but were engulfed by ancestors leading to today's eukaryotic cells. We know that the aerobic bacterium was engulfed first because more eukaryotic cells have it. That is, almost all protozoa, as well as animals, fungi, plants, and algae have mitochondria. There are only a very few eukaryotic cells that don't have mitochondria. Some of them may have split off very early on before the ancestor that engulfed the aerobic bacterium did that. Others may have simply lost their mitochondria after having it for many generations, 
simply because they're internal parasites and they don't really need the mitochondrion. However, most eukaryotic cells do have a mitochondrion suggesting that the aerobic bacterium was engulfed very early in the eukaryotic lineage. So that is a bacterium from over here was engulfed by a cell over here. The cyanobacterium, however, its engulfment led to the chloroplast. Of course, chloroplasts are only in a few different types of eukaryotic cells, mainly algae and plant cells, suggesting that the cyanobacterium was engulfed by an ancestor of plants and algae after it split off from the lineages that led to protozoa, animals, and fungi. So again, that cyanobacterium was engulfed from over here by a more recent ancestor of plants and algae. So that is how we know the order that, the, that these events happened in. Now, let's look at some of the evidence for the endosymbiotic theory. Why scientists think that these two organelles came from bacterial cells. It's because of how many similarities there are between the organelles and bacteria cells. For example, the DNA. Eukaryotic cells have linear segments of DNA. Bacterial cells, as well as mitochondria and chloroplasts, have circular DNA. This is something that students often forget. When they think about DNA inside the cell, they always think about this DNA, the nuclear DNA. But remember that mitochondria and chloroplasts have their own DNA, and it is structurally similar to bacterial DNA. Another one is ribosomes. There are ribosomes inside the cell. Eukaryotic cell ribosomes are ADS ribosomes that has to do with their type of structure, whereas the ribosomes that are in mitochondria and chloroplasts are 70S ribosomes. 70S ribosomes are the kind that are also found in bacteria cells, further suggesting that these organelles came from bacteria. Their type of replication is also similar to bacteria cells. Students will often forget that chloroplasts and mitochondria can actually replicate somewhat autonomously in the cytoplasm of the cell, and they do so through a procedure very similar to binary fission. Binary fission is how bacteria cells replicate. If you're interested in learning more about binary fission, please see my video on that topic. There's also their size. Most eukaryotic cells are about 100 micrometers. Bacteria cells, as well as mitochondria and chloroplasts, are closer to 10 micrometers. So the sizes are similar as well. And finally, the location of the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is used in aerobic respiration, and it is found in the internal membranes of the mitochondria and chloroplasts, suggesting again that these organelles are descendants of bacteria capable of aerobic respiration. So that is it for the endosymbiotic theory. I hope you learned a lot, and thanks for watching Biology Professor.